Shapers Institute, uh, my friend Larry Costa. Well, tonight as uh, we open God's Word for just a few moments before the choir continues to sing, I, I wanted to just be down here and, and, and be nice and close to you, not only as uh, those of you that are part of my CCDA family, but also those of you that are part of the Lake Avenue Church family. I feel extremely uh, privileged to call you both friends and family, and, and I'm thrilled that you've chosen to uh, come out on a rain-filled night and just worship together with us. And if you are a visitor, you've come to the right place. We're going to have a great time tonight. There's a lot of love and great people here, and so uh, let's just enjoy one another together. If you uh, haven't been a part of our CCDA conference, I just want you to know that each time we've had a general session, someone's been privileged to stand up and get my bionics going for me, buddy. All right, thanks. Each night, we've been privileged to share a little bit of a, a practicum so that we can share a little bit about ministry. And I am one of those that's privileged to serve in an urban context. And, and, and we, we gather urban leaders who are serving at-risk youth. And we try to equip them with the skills and the tools that they need so that they can do more exceptional youth ministry. Because I don't know if you noticed it or not, but we're losing a lot of our young people to some, some huge issues that are ravaging our youth culture. And, and, and so many of the people that have been at this conference are standing in the gap for this generation of urban young people. And, and we want to we come alongside and celebrate that, but equip them to do more effective youth ministry. I also want you to know that uh, we live and, and serve in an area of Santa Ana in the Latino community where we work among the poor and we equip them educationally. Much of what you're doing here at Lake through the Villa uh, Street program here right up the way here. And we count it a privilege, I count it a privilege to be a Latino role model in the Latino community and to be a voice of hope to young Hispanic kids who aren't aware of the fact that there is hope and our team loves to stand in the gap and, and give fresh hope to those kids. And while tonight I could spend some time sharing multiple stories about, uh, about what it is that we do in greater detail, I really felt that the Lord was challenging me to prepare a message, to fashion a message that would, would minister to both the Lake family and the CCDA family. I want those of you that are from the Lake community to know that we've been talking about what are we going to do about it. There are huge injustices and issues around the world. And unless God's people step up and do something innovative and bold and creative, something that would dare to impact this generation, we have nothing to, we, we have nothing to say then if we step up and stand up and are a voice of hope, and, and if, if we don't step up, no matter what our context, urban or suburban, who's going to do it? And so I just believe, I, I, I'm just a Latino guy. Some of you probably don't even know. You can't even see me. I, I don't stick out of the ground very far. But I'm just here to tell you that God is calling his people to be a voice of hope in a time when the world desperately needs hope. And so... I'm this young, revolutionary Latino guy because these two crazy white ladies came into my neighborhood when I was a little kid that they thought brown kids were important enough to Jesus that they opened up their home every Tuesday afternoon to tell kids about Jesus. And today, but tonight, by way of a practicum, I want to I wanna kind of speak in reverse to say what can happen if we would step up into some of these communities and to, to live our lives in such a way that we would get to know some of the, the people, the real-life people, whether they're children or adults, and that we would engage them enough to, to, to share Jesus and to share our lives to the point that they might bloom and develop to be all that God created them to be. And so I represent... All those brown kids that are out there yet to be reached in this community and beyond. All the African American kids, all those, all those, all those young people and, and, and around the world that are yet to be reached. And so I'm going to call you out tonight. Whether you're from this community or you're from an urban ministry around the world tonight, in the brief time that I have, I'm going to, I'm going to call you out to join me on this revolutionary mission to make a difference. But I, I want our driving 
mission, our, our battle cry to be taken from the text of God's word. And so if you have your Bible tonight, I want you to turn to Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9, because there's a, one of my favorite passages of scripture that has been one of my, one of, one of the things that God has used to compel me to live this revolutionary life in these end times. To be this voice of hope, and as you're finding that, I want you to begin in verse 9 of Matthew chapter 9. Matthew 9, 9 says this, And Jesus went on from there, and he saw a man named Matthew sitting in the tax collector's booth. And he said to Matthew, follow me, he told him. And Matthew got up and followed him. Briefly, let me just say, Matthew is conducting business. He's going about his vocation. And Jesus engages Matthew. There were probably times where Matthew inflated people's taxes and scraped off the extra for himself. It was a, this was a, a very vulnerable time for Matthew. And Jesus embraces Matthew and invites him to join him. Jesus engages him and he says, Matthew, follow me. And Matthew got up and followed him. There was some kind of revolution that happened right there. Matthew was somehow engaged to the point that he would leave his vocation. He would leave everything that gave him identity. He would somehow do something so radical, so counterintuitive as to follow Jesus. But it doesn't stop there. Look at verse 10. God's word says that while Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. But when the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? I'll tell you why. See, Jesus' game plan is to bring such a radical revolution to us as individuals, to our hearts, that then he sends us out as his revolutionaries. He revolutionizes us so he can send us out as revolutionaries. He transforms us so he can send us out to be transformational. Jesus never wants to come in and keep us the same. In fact, I'll be so bold as to say you can't meet the real Jesus and stay the same. And so Jesus is inviting Matthew to join him, but it doesn't stop there. It's not enough to proclaim and, and to then bring Jesus, uh, to bring Matthew into this relationship, but now Jesus is inviting Matthew to go with him on mission. And they go back to Matthew's home and throw a party. And, all, and have Matthew, all Matthew's homeboys and homegirls and crazy knucklehead friends. And they're all over at Matthew's house. And Jesus is right there in the middle of it. Showing them what God looks like with skin on. Transformed to be transformational. Revolutionized to be revolutionary. We pick it up in verse 18. While he was saying this, a ruler came and kneeled before him. This ruler says to Jesus, my daughter has just died, but come and put your hand on her and she will live. Jesus got up and went with them and so did his disciples. But th just then a woman who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years came up from behind him and touched the edge of Jesus' cloak. She said to herself, if only I could touch his cloak, I will be healed. Verse 22, Jesus turned to her and said, take heart, daughter. Your faith has healed you. And the woman was healed from that moment. There was some kind of revolution, some kind of transformation that happened in her life. But now they, they were on mission. They were interrupted by this woman with a need. And then now they, they're back with Jesus on mission. Verse 23, when Jesus entered the ruler's house, he saw the flute pl uh, uh, players and the noisy crowd, and he said, go away. The girl is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. And after the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took the girl by the hand. And she got up. She was revolutionized. She was, she was transformed because Jesus engaged her at her point of need. But it didn't stop there. Verse 26 says, news of this spread throughout the entire region. Transformational. This ripple effect, this this revolutionized to be revolutionary so that, so that change begins to spread and impact beyond our own experience. If time permitted me, I'd, I'd like to read the rest of the text, 27 on. 
goes and gives you other snapshots of people that were impacted as Jesus and his guys were on mission. But I want to fast forward to verse 35. Jesus summarizes the game plan, and he, he helps us see in, a, in this simple summary of what he's been doing. He gave us these snapshots of different people, different lives that have been revolutionized. And then the ripple effect as people testified about what Jesus did and how it revolutionized beyond that initial experience. In verse 35, he gives us our game plan. It says that Jesus went through all the towns and villages. Jesus went through all the towns and villages and the neighborhoods and the alleys and the, and the back streets where people don't even like to drive. But Jesus and his guys, they went through all the towns and villages teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom. Did you know the news is still good? The news is still good. That God is willing to trade straight, a, straight across all of our sin and brokenness for his love, his unconditional love and acceptance. Man, a world that's desperately broken and thirsty so desperately needs to know that good news. Well, Jesus went through all the towns and villages and he brought the good news of the kingdom and he healed every disease and sickness. And when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them. Compassion. Because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. He went on to say, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers in to his harvest field. Tonight, I'm going to invite you to join me afresh, to re-up your commitment to join Jesus on this revolutionary mission, that you would be courageous enough to say, Lord, would you do the same miracle that you did in me, the same revolution that you brought to my heart when I was so self-centered and doing it my way, when I repented, when I turned around and you brought that revolution to me and then I've been following you, would you do that same miracle of, of revolution in other people's lives as I touch them and impact them in the marketplace, in the barrio, in the hood, in that alley over there with those kids that, 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 that always act out and are raging in the gang. God, would you use me in my community, in my neighborhood to be this, this revolutionized revolutionary? Tonight, just to make it practical, in, in your uh, worship folder tonight, you have a little blank page there, and I want you to open that up, and I want to leave you a quick acronym. If you're from CCDA, I want you to write on the far left column of your worship folder anywhere, on your arm, I don't care, it's all good. But write the letter CCDA, and I'm going to give you a quick principle for each letter. If you're from Lake, I want you to write the word the letters for Lake, L-A-K-E, down the left side of your worship folder. And I want to give you a little four-step game plan for being revolutionary. So if you're from CCDA, the C, the first C in CCDA stands for celebrate our history as urban workers. Celebrate our history, but confirm your calling anew. Confirm your calling anew. Some of you have been working in the urban community. You've come to this conference. We're asking that you'll re-up again for the Lord and, and re go back to your community and be that voice of hope in those neighborhoods where there's very little hope. Would you, would you celebrate CCDA's history and, and this rich movement, but would you confirm your calling again to say, God, I'm in. I'm in in these last days. I'm in. You can count on me. I'm in until you come again. If you're from Lake, the L in Lake, Lake stands for launch boldly into the future. Launch boldly into the future. The future is now. Embrace the rich diversity of this community. Step up. Have your pastors back and help move this wonderful church into the future as you engage and embrace the diverse community 
that is right here at your doorstep. What a great privilege for this church to step up and launch out in this bold ministry and, and usher in the future with God's help. The second C, quickly, in CCDA, character still counts, yo. Character still counts. As you go back to those urban centers, remember that as you minister in a postmodern context, people need to see a person of character and integrity living out the gospel. Make sure that your biblical IQ matches your spiritual I do. Live it out in the community. Character still counts. The A in Lake stands for allow for change. Allow for change. I want to challenge you, Lake. Do you want a church only for you and your friends, or do you want a church for your children and, get, and grandchildren? The community is changing. And I want to invite you to join me to be revolutionary and to allow for, to allow for that change and as you usher in the future so that you can build a church that in 15, 20 years will still be as relevant as it is today and beyond. The D in CCDA, quickly, develop and empower the next generation. Develop and empower the next generation. As you return CCDAers, be more intentional about developing those around you. Be more intentional about developing those around you. I hope that next year when we all meet in New Orleans, when we all come together in New Orleans, I hope you're going to all bring your young Joshua's. That next generation that you're developing, that you're going to pass the torch to. Develop and empower the next generation. The K in Lake stands for keep doing something about it. That's been our theme here this week of CCDA. Andy shared with us some of the great things that this church is doing to bring revolution to this community. And so, Lake family, I just want to exhort you with love to keep doing something about it. Proclamation and demonstration married together both globally, global missions, but also local missions. Keep doing something about it. The last, the A in CCDA. Accomplish your God-given assignment. Urban youth workers and urban leaders, accomplish your God-given assignment. You are transformed to be transformational. You've been revolutionized to be revolutionary. Finish strong. Be prophetic. Speak in the kids' lives, but accomplish your God-given assignment. And the E in Lake stands for expect challenges. Expect challenges. You know, to usher in this kind of revolution, to be a church that moves into the future by embracing the diversity that's right on our doorstep, to be more intentional about that, there are going to be some challenges. But I just got to believe that the Father heart of God, who loves people from every tongue, tribe, and nation, he's so passionate about all people because when he sent his son, he, they died, he, he died for all people. And I just think that the party should start this side of eternity since we're going to spend eternity together anyway. And so, Lake, let the party begin and let's usher in the future, but expect challenges in the process. Let me close our time in a prayer. Father, I thank you for this great church, the leadership and the beautiful people in this place. Father, we just invite your spirit to, to come in such a, a fresh new way that you would bring revolution to each heart and fresh courage and boldness to launch out to do something more revolutionary than they've ever imagined. Lord, would you bring a, a spirit of unity as they follow you as revolutionized revolutionaries to bring transformation to this community. And Father, as our CCDAers go back home to be a voice of hope in some very difficult context, Father, would your, would your spirit fill them afresh with fresh boldness and courage to be those revolutionaries that they've been? But would you refuel them and send them out as your righteous revolutionaries 
who would dare to usher in your kingdom day in and day out in the at-risk communities in which they serve. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on each of us to be your righteous revolutionaries in a world that so desperately needs to see your gospel lived out in flesh and blood. And all God's righteous revolutionaries said, Amen. 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 Bless